Hi guys, I'm Darren and today we're going to be taking a first look at the Matek H743 Slim. So before we get started, just for transparency, I'd like to state that this has been provided by Banggood, so thank you for them. But let's have a look at what we've got. So as you can see, this is brand new. I've not even opened the packet yet. And I'm gonna have struggle to do that now because it's always a struggle on camera. There we go. So let's see what we get in the packet. Right, so we have the flight controller itself. And we have a accessory bag with some standoffs and some little connectors. So you may be wondering why I've opted for the slim rather than the wing. After all, I'm a plain guy, but I did spot something. I thought actually that looks quite familiar to a flight controller that I already have. Uh, this one, in fact. So what I thought was I'd get this and we can see how well suited it is for an alternate airplane setup using the same PDB. Because if we look at the side, we have the same connector with the uh, UART on it. So I've also ordered one of these, which is the um, F722PX wing PDB. So this will actually, we can solder this up in the same way as the F722, and that will work straight with this PDB. And the reason why I thought it might be worth a go is because of size. Now granted, there's not a lot of difference, but this is a very similar size to the F7 of the H743 um, wing. And this, as you can see, is pretty, well, the PDB is the exact same PDB. So the size of this is gonna be the same. So we put the two together. You can see even with these uh, servo pins at 90 degrees, you're gonna save a bit of space. So if you've got a smaller build, the slim might be actually a very good option. So I thought, you know, I'll do a build with the slim and see how it goes. So there are a couple of differences, which I'll put up on the screen now so we can see. So what you're going to be looking at right now is I've, I've just done a rundown of the basic specs of the two flight controllers and also the PDB. And really there's only four real differences between the wing and for slim with that wing PDB. And that is actually the slim and the wing PDB has a bigger input voltage range. It can run from 2S rather than 3S. And the only other sort of major difference is actually on the other vo voltage rails. So the, um, the VTX on the wing has a nine or 12 volt, whereas on the slim you, you're limited to just the, using the five volt rail or VBAT. Most VTXs these days can be powered off VBAT, so it's not really a, a, an end of game issue. The bigger issue could be the size of aircraft you're putting it in. The main issue here is the servo beck on the wing has a, an eight volt constant and a 10 volt burst, whereas the, the wing PDB has a five volt constant and a 5.5 volt burst. So the actual power you can put to the servos is much less. But where I'm looking at it as a slightly smaller option, you're probably going to put it in something slightly smaller. Otherwise, you've got the space for the wing. Why not just use the wing? So I don't see that as a massive issue. It's just opening up more options. And the only other real difference is the, um, the H743 wing comes with a remote USB with a buzzer built onto it, whereas the USB on the H743 Slim is built onto the board. So let's have a quick look at that. So you can see here, there you have the underside. This is actually the bottom of the board. And you can see we have a nice yeah, USB type C port there. So this is a nice modern port and it actually looks a lot more rugged. Um, than the original sort of uh, micro USB that we're more used to. It does mean that if you want to take you know, something to the field to update it, if you're not using Bluetooth, you need a, a different cable. Um, but what I actually do is I have USB-C, I have an adapter to micro USB, 
or what I've started getting into recently is the uh, the magnetic ones. Where this is a micro USB, you can get mini USB and type C. So you can just put those on and use the exact same cable and it makes it easier to get in on type builds. So I actually quite like when it's got USB-C. I wish more things had it. I mean, some newer stuff is still coming out with mini USB, which is, you know, ancient stuff now. If you're not worried about having that as a breakout board, um, if you don't need eight amps of uh, current for your servos, I mean, five amps, you, you could run, you know, safely run you know, six servos on that. And if you're running beefy servos, probably four, but stuff like pan and tilt is, you could yeah, quite happily have a full house plane with pan and tilt on that. And, and again, as I say, the power range is actually, it, this can run at, on 2S, whereas the wing can't. So for smaller builds, it's actually a pretty good option. So that's what I thought I'd try. All right, so here we have the PDB and the flight controller itself. And the wiring will be exactly the same as if you're wiring up this guy right here. The only difference is on this port here there is a uart same same as on the port on this on this one it is the rx for uart3 on this one here it's the rx for uart8 so where down here next to your um, motor signal and ground you have rx3 that would actually be rx8 so if you wanted to hook up um, esc sensors you just have to remember that that's actually going to be uh, the RX of UR8 and not UR3. But other than that, they're exactly the same. So every, every other pin on this controller here is correct on the slim. It's literally just the, the RX number that's different. On this one, you're direct wiring to the flight controller anyway with solder. So you just hook those up the same. So you, you would have all 10 servo outputs you would have your motor control, you'd have RX8 for telemetry, ground, all that going straight through. And also the current sense, which one's that? I believe that's on here. will go straight to your flight controller too. So you just obviously use the um, current sensor values for this PDB as your starting point. And then just yeah, calibrate it using my video, which I'll put a link to up there if you wish. So I figured the best thing to do was actually to put it together just to make sure that there were no conflicts or anything like that. You can see I've not soldered these pins in, but you can also see that there is absolutely no chance of anything on these two boards touching and it will actually work a treat, to be honest. You can might just be able to see in the center and on the top board, there is the barometer. So to put a piece of open cell foam, probably sit it on top of that uh, big chip in there and that will get some nice protection on the barometer. But other than that, yeah, it's it just goes together exactly the same as this one. So you can see there's just as much clearance it's as if they're made to go together. So I thought next we could take a quick look around the, the actual flight controller itself and see what we have on here. So sorry about the glare. It's the only way I can get sort of lighting so we can actually see it. So what we have is along this back edge, we have UR7, which is those four pins there. UR6, which has 4.5 volts. So it could be for like GPS or your um, receiver. I'm guessing that's powered through USB. So it might be handy to have both of those two on there. We have UR2, which is again 4.5 volts. So again, receiver, GPS. At the top, we have CTS-7 and RTS-7. Now, I must admit, I don't actually know what these are yet. I haven't come across them before. And we also have another 4.5 volt a ground. And then we have two sets of uh, data one and clock one for the I squared seed bus. So that'd be I squared seed bus number one. So what we'll do, rotate this. So on this side, we have basically the stuff that was going to go into the, the ribbon cables. So we'll start on this side. This is uh, S1 to S4. So they're already connected to the, the port 
on this side of a flight controller so we don't need to worry about those just plug the cable in put them straight into the pdb along the top we have s5 to s12 so we'll be wiring up i believe it's s5 to s10 onto our our connector to go into the pdb so we've we've still got s11 and s12 up here if we want them we've also got the leds up here too so we have v background which possibly could need wiring up i know that there is a power i can't remember if it's five volt or v back so we could be using that to go into the cable the connector cable as well we have the uart number eight up here which again is on the the first plug-in cable so that goes down to the pdb for esc telemetry and we have current sensor in as well again it, it's all through the cable we don't need to worry about any of that at all so i'm guessing this stuff up here again i've not really come across before and i'm guessing it's to do with the CAN bus so we, we have a cs2 s1 so sk and i think that's cs1 we have c dash l c dash h ground and five volt so i believe this is something to do with CAN bus i've not really used it before so I, i'm not going to speculate there's also another four and a half volt pad up on the top of it. so on this front edge we have our vtx power uh, we need to actually bridge the center pad to either the five volt or the vbat otherwise you won't get any power to here for your vtx so this is a switchable power as well so we have along the top we have uart3 we have uart4 there's no power for uart4 um so possibly use that for your small audio because it's with the vtx so we we have the vtx image out here we have camera one vbat ground five volt and camera two we have clock and data for i squared c bus number two here we have five volts ground and uart number one up on the top here and then there's this cam pad here which is a direct route that doesn't go through the cam switcher so if you just have one cam you could hook it up to there and then it completely bypasses the, the switcher right so on this final side there's actually something that's very useful so here we have data plus and minus um and v bus and ground so these are used for the usb connector so if the usb connector does break off or even if you just wanted to put one on a cable for a breakout usb you can wire it directly onto the flight controller here so if there's no problems if this does snap off it's not a problem at all you don't have to try and do some really fiddly micro soldering to get a new usb on you can just solder wires onto these pads it's a brilliant idea we have five volt and buzzer here that one there i can't see what it is there's no screening for it but i'm sure the matek documentation will have what that pad there is for Again, we have 5 volt, we have a 3.3 volt, and then we have some analog to digital converters. So we have airspeed sensor, VBAT2, current 2, and RSSI. And then these three here, 3D, G, and C, no idea what they're for. <laughs> but again, it would probably be in the Matek documentation. It's not something that's been used commonly. So that's an overview of this flight controller which I think will work a treat for small builds. Not even necessarily for small builds. You could quite easily put this in something like an AR Pro. Um, quite, you could even put it in a mini, a Crosswind Mini. It would handle all that with no problem whatsoever. So one last thing, how much does it all weigh? So I know that the H743 wing is about 30 grams. So there we go. If you're worried about weight, you're saving about 10 grams with using this one here. So normally I'd probably try and hook this up to INAV, but let's cover the elephant in the room. And that is the flight controller software. So at the moment, you can't run INAV on this. The target is a work in progress, and I believe they're about halfway through getting it ready. 
I believe it's bookmarked in for 2.7. So when that comes out, we should have a working version. What it does mean though is I'm going to have to learn RGplane. So if you haven't seen my ramblings on our fixed queen group, you won't know how much I hate Mission Planner. I think it's a horrible piece of software and it's really, really badly designed. But still, I'm going to plod on and get RGplane running on this flight controller right here. And what I've decided to do is as I go through the process, I am going to record some videos. I, I will be an absolute beginner. So any information that I find out that helps me will obviously help other new people too. So that is the plan with this. Um, I'll be putting RGplane on it and I don't know what plane I'm going to put it in. Possibly the Crosswind Mini, actually. It would work quite well with that. So this is actually going to be quite a nice test bed for me until then. So I'll be learning RG playing on it and see how it goes. But hopefully they will have a, a release for iNav with this quite soon as well. Usually about six months, so possibly around April, May time. 2.6 was just released in December. But there we go. I hope you guys have found this video useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. And if you are not already a subscriber, please consider subscribing. Both those things will help get this video out to more people so they you know, potentially could find an, a nice smaller H743 series flight controller for their planes. So thank you guys. I hope you all stay safe. And if you can get out and fly, have a great time. Fly your models like you stole them. And I'll see you on the next one.